Rub up your engines! Now here's a bit of automotive history. A 65 Ford Falcon. It's gone a long way from what it started out as, but when they started the Falcons in 1960, it was Ford's economy car, it was less than $2,000, and it was the first design that went to a unibody construction. Before that, they were frames and the body bolted on the frame. This is unibody. And this car is now about as far away as you could possibly get from the original idea. It was made to sell to the housewives to go to the grocery store and take the kids to school and stuff. Like I say, it was an economy car. It was under $2,000. It eventually gave rise to the Ford Mustang. The Mustang was based on the Falcon chassis. It's also a unibody construction too. Okay, this guy now has over $60,000 in this. So let's see what he's done. So here we have the 351 Windsor. <laughs> it's a bit different than the six cylinder engine. He had to put the fancy hood on it in order to fit this gigantic holly carburetor in there. This puts out about 500 horsepower now. A long way from the Econobox sub $2,000 ladies drive to the grocery store car that Ford had envisioned for it in the first place. He had to hide a pump in here for a vacuum canister for the brake boost system because the engine doesn't create enough vacuum, especially at idle. So this is set up to have boosted brakes, which of course the original ones didn't even have straight boosted brakes. As you can see, there's no room for an electric fan, so he's putting an electric one here. The original ones ran off the water pump, but there's no room with all the stuff he put in. He's got a racing radiator. It's a beautiful setup. See, off this particular car, he got sideswept and really knocked the heck out of the car. You would never notice looking at it until you see what he left. And what he left was, this is the only part left from the wreck he left it crushed as a reminder. To look both ways when you're driving, if you see somebody coming at you, get the heck out of the other way. Turn it and go as fast as you can. I did keep a lot of the original dash stuff. It's cool, you know, he added his own tachometer and steering wheel and everything. And of course the transmission has nothing to do with the original one. He's got a TCI Street Fighter tranny put in with an MSD system set up, digital, they didn't even know what digital was back when this thing was made. See, they got big chunks in them, and these had all completely done over. The problem with these are they rot away. You can see where all kinds of welding's been done. If you're going to mess around with one of these, you're going to have to do an awful lot of body work. The rest of the drivetrain, this is not a stock differential rear end, and neither are the shocks. That's how this thing can handle that horsepower. It has very little to do with the original suspension system of the vehicle. These wide tires, they also have nothing to do with the original tires. They had tubes in them. These gripping tire designs didn't even exist back then, of course. Now, being his baby, he's putting it away soon. He's not going to drive this with the salt on the road in Rhode Island. Luckily enough, though, the car originally came from Florida, so there's a lot of original body parts still on it because it didn't rot away being in Florida. I guess the guy didn't take it to the beach. So let's take a listen to this one-time economy car that's now a $60,000 monster. Now, if you don't know anything about cars, you might think, well, that sounds horrible. Well, it has racing cam in it, and racing cams are made for going really fast, not really slow. Now, take a modern car. I had a 2013 Shelby Cobra GT500. It had such an intricate variable valve timing system that when it's idling, it had a mild cam in it because the computer would set it up that way. But then when you push the race button and then it would go like stink and it could change it anytime it wanted through the computer. Well, this is pre-computer day, so you're either gonna have a wild cam or you're gonna have a mild cam, and this has a wild cam, and that's why they idle like that. A lot of young guys probably have no idea. You think it's running bad, but no, that's how they run. All the chrome that he's put on this thing, you can see, you know, it is no longer an economy car like it originally started out as. These Falcons are starting to get popular for two reasons. One, they're the precursor of the Mustangs, and basically they are much cheaper cars to buy and fix up. You don't have to put 60 grand plus like he has into the car, but if you're thinking about getting one of these, maybe take it up to Florida, Arizona, wherever. 
where they don't rust. Because these unibodies, man, when you start cutting and welding, if the body's rotted out, you'll put so much time and energy in it, and even an excellent welder's gonna have a problem without having to rebuild absolutely everything since they don't have an actual frame. So start like he did. If you can find one in Florida, Arizona, that's what you do. So let's take it for a spin. Here we go. You can see this thing is made for speed. Side pipes tend to be a little bit on the loud side. And here we go. You don't just hear it in this, you feel it too. I can feel it in my feet. <laughs> Here we go. Now you gotta agree, looking at the car, it's an insanely good looking car compared to what the original was, which was an Econobox, sub $2,000 car for women to take to the grocery store. Like I said, they didn't come with 351 Windsor V8s. They certainly didn't have hood scoops on them. And truthfully, my father owned one. The paint job wasn't this good. <laughs> he's put some money into this paint job. I think he's probably got 13 to 15 grand into the paint alone. I mean, yeah, which is what? Six times what the original car costs. Yet it still keeps the look of a 65 Falcon. But definitely not the sound. If you're looking for an interesting car, you know, all the Mustangs have been taken and they're overpriced you could start with one of these and make it whatever you want maybe you want to make a wrap falcon there's plenty of those out there <laughs> or maybe you want to go whole hog like he did but still considering this is certainly a unique piece of americana and even at 60 grand what do you get today for sixty thousand dollars you know this will just continue to stay where it is or appreciate in value where of course the new cars just drop like stone so something like a falcon if you're ever thinking about it just do like i said try to get one from arizona new mexico some place where they don't rust because if the frame's rusted don't even think about buying it i had a customer get one from florida once that had been taken to the beach he was all excited and he brought it to me and i said well let me jack it up every time i jacked it up pieces would bend and crunch because it was completely rotten away so stay away from rusted versions of them and here's some bonus questions and answers. Good Vibes 24 says, I recently changed out a water pump and I tightened the screw and it broke off. Are there any type of seal I can put in the screw hole so it doesn't leak? Thanks. All right. Well, the screw holes, almost every single vehicle, they don't leak. They're just threaded in and the bolt holds the tension on the gasket. The gasket might leak around there. Now, if you see the gasket doesn't leak, you can just leave it alone. There's generally enough tension with the other bolts so it doesn't leak. But if it does leak, you're either going to have to drill it all out, tap it, put a new bolt in, or what I often do is there is a great sealer called The Right Stuff. A company called Permatex makes it. It's a very expensive sealer, but you take the water pump off, you put that sealer on where the gasket is, and then bolt it on. By the time you're done, it's dried enough that it won't leak. And even if you've lost two of those bolts, it generally still won't leak because it has a very good sealer that will seal the water in. If it doesn't leak now, don't worry about it. But if it does, take it back off, use some of the right stuff, bolt it on, and then it won't leak. Or if you really want to, you can drill it out and then re-tap it. There's not much work in room. It's kind of hard to do. So if it isn't leaking now, it should be totally fine. But if it is, try the right stuff. That can seal it and you won't have problems with it anyways at that. Dave says, should I get an Escalade, Denali, or Navigator? I get that I'm basically asking what is better, a crappy truck or a crappier truck. What should I get out of these? I have to get one of those. I'd go Navigator because the GM quality is the absolute lowest. There's no arguing that of those big giant trucks. The Navigators, I've had customers buy Navigators. They get 150, 60 and they're still running okay. I even had a guy who bought one with 80,000. Now he's got 180 and it's still run perfectly fine. As they age, of course, the electronics break. They're very complex and every single one of those things is a tremendous gas hog. There's no arguing that. But out of those, I would not buy the GM products. It doesn't matter what they call them. Escalade, Denali, they're all GM. There's no such thing as Cadillac, you know. No, it's just General Motors. I would go with the Navigator. If you got to get a big thing like that and you're going to spend that kind of money, don't get any GM product because you're not going to be satisfied in the long run. With the Ford, at least you can get usually a decent amount of mileage out of the things before they come apart. But with the GM stuff, especially with the Cadillacs, I have never had a customer in the last 20 years that bought a Cadillac and didn't hate it by the time they got rid of it. The quality is just not there. It just isn't there with GM products, especially with the Cadillacs. High end, they get a lot of profit when they sell them, but they aren't made any better than their others stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.